What's up everyone, Alex Comstock here with Whitetail DNA. And on today's video, I'm actually out in the tree stand right now. Today's November 3rd, and it's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I figured I got some rut hunting tips on my mind that I wanted to bring you, and I figured this would be the best time to film it. So I apologize for talking a little quiet, but uh, yeah, that's what I want to cover in today's video. It's five rut hunting tips that I had that I want to bring you to hopefully help you over the over the next few weeks and in future ruts. So with that, uh, let's jump right into today's video. <music> Tip number one that I want to cover is just time and stand. You know, the rut can vary so much from being hot to cold, from bucks chasing does to seemingly nothing going on in the woods. And really the best way I've found to go about just attacking this is just hunt as much as you can. That might mean an hour in the stand after work. That might mean if you can hunt all day, hunt all day. I mean, today's a great example for me. It's November 3rd and we've got the warmest day that I've probably since the beginning of October. It's pushing 70 degrees here in Northern Minnesota today. I mean, I've already hunted this year where it was in the single digits, so it's it's definitely not ideal, but I've got this week slated out to hunt all day every day, and so I'm putting time in the stand. I'm, uh, you know, sitting all day, and here in the morning I didn't see anything, but I've seen five bucks, two of them shooters since 10 o'clock this morning. So I've had some decent midday movement, bucks chasing does, and that's just all about spending time in the stand. Tip number two that I want to talk about is staying mentally sharp. And this kind of falls along the same lines of that anything can happen at any time. You might go two, three, four days but seeing hardly anything and then four or five sits into a vacation, you might have a flurry of buck movement at one in the afternoon on a random day. So, so it's staying mentally sharp because once you're mentally out of the game and just not paying attention, you're just on your phone the whole time, that's when you're going to get caught by surprise and that's when, you know, big bucks and it comes through and you're not going to be ready. So definitely stay mentally sharp and uh, just know that anything can happen literally at any time. The third tip that I want to cover is just being comfortable. Now I'm going to kind of cover three things in this tip, but it comes down to having a comfy tree stand having plenty of food and drinks and having some form of entertainment because at the end of the day spending long hours in a tree stand isn't easy if you can have something like a book or your phone and, you know but still have your ears open that can really help you spend the whole time in the in the tree instead of getting down because you're bored and going home or whatnot and then having plenty of food and water or food and drinks i find that pretty critical um, you know the more comfortable you are and you got food and drinks and whatnot you're more apt to stay in the stand longer. You know, I like to go all out and, you know, my buddy Sam Soholt, if you if you know Sam, he uh, he's kind of the uh, catalyst around, um, you know, having, you know, like these gourmet snacks in the, in the tree stand or gourmet lunches, you know, biscuits and gravy, yada, yada. Today I've got, you know, a thermos full of SpaghettiOs. Um, just stuff that, you know, it's the little things, you know. If it's a cold, cold day today, it's not, but you got a warm thermos of SpaghettiOs or you make some pizza rolls. Uh, that can really go a long way, you know, boosting your morale. And then uh, the last thing is having a comfy tree stand. If your tree stand's not comfy, whether it be a cushion or if you're in a forward leaning tree, odds are you're not going to be making it very long. So, you know, this is another good example is a stand I'm in. It's really not that comfy. And I was debating getting out today just because of it. But then I had a bunch of bucks come through at 11, 12 o'clock, and now I gotta stay. So, overall, just the more comfortable you are in the stand, the more apt that you're gonna be in the stand all day, more hours, and that's gonna inevitably lead you to better chances at shooting a mature buck. And tip number four that I wanna talk about is hunting does, right? I get a lot of questions about People ask me about buck bedding areas and this certain buck and that certain buck this time of year. And that can be great and all, but at the end of the day, bucks are after one thing this time of year, and that's to breed does. And so where does are, bucks will be. I mean, so I'm always trying to figure out where doe bedding areas are, hunting 
the downwind sides of those while Bucks come and send check them, yada yada. Because Bucks will be where does are, and that's that's really critical. And then the last tip that I want to cover is calling and knowing the different phases of the rut and what calls to kind of use, right? So calling can be a tricky one because some people don't understand when to do what calls. So essentially there's a few different phases of the rut. There's the beginning, the first week of November, last week of October, where it's more of the you know, pre-rut into the seeking chase phase, and then there's the all out, you know, chasing and you know the peak rut where the bucks are actually breeding, and there's more of the post rut. So rattling to me works the best in the pre-rut, early rut, and then the post rut. You know, when, when bucks are squaring off against each other trying to find these does. During the peak rut, when bucks are fully engaged in breeding and chasing does, I don't find that to be as effective. So at that time of the year, I'm doing more doe bleeding and stuff like that. So it's just knowing when to call, um, you know. Don't be afraid to do some blind calling, but don't be calling all the time. I keep thinking I'm hearing something behind me. But at the end of the day, don't be afraid to be vocal. And just understand as the phases of the rut changes, you know, what, you, what calls to be doing can change as well. So um, those are my five rut hunting tips that I wanted to bring you. I hope they can help you in your endeavors uh, chasing big bucks here over the course of this month and in, the, in years in the future. So really appreciate you watching. You could uh, hit that subscribe button down low, hit the like button, all that good shit. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you here in the next video.